Showcase Kitchens for Dishing with Donna. And with us now is Chef Jason Wallace. Welcome to the show. Hello, Donna. Nice to see you. And nice to see you well. Christopher Brian Roach. Yay! Hey. Goes wild. Yay! So here we are once again, and we're going to be having some something new. Uh, Chef, what are you bringing us tonight? So from Salish Cafe out of Brooklyn, 1543 Broadway, uh, we prepare a mosh salad with arugula. It has a fig vinaigrette on it, as well as dried figs, goat cheese, and it's topped with uh, toasty onion ribbons. Toasty onion ribbons. Okay, so now how did you learn how to cook? Yeah, so I started cooking in the Navy, United States Navy, USS Nitro AE-23, and then I went to the Culinary Institute of America. You did? Yeah. Was that hard to get into the sea? I know you went that whole thing, don't you? There's figs Are you gonna, I know, I'm going to, here, have a thing. Yeah, the so, dried figs around so the So was it hard to get into the CIA? It's at pretty that, competitive. At that time, it was a two-year wait, and I had applied when I still had two years in, on my ship. So okay. it was perfect timing for me. And growing up, did you want to cook? I did not. I was an athlete. I actually grew up in uh, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, went to the same high school as Joe Namath. And uh, we, you know, we're kind of football, basketball, baseball nuts down in Western Pennsylvania. Excellent. And so for you, I was asking you if you know how to cook and what was your answer to me? No, I wasn't allowed in the kitchen as a kid. How'd you get so big? Uh, sneaking food. <laughs> <laughs> we, when I waited for my, I waited, waited for my father to fall asleep because my father, anytime he went in the kitchen, it was four kids. Yeah. Get out of the kitchen! Kitchen's when, closed, right? Yeah, after, after 7 p.m., kitchen's closed! <laughs> So I had to sneak my food. There you go. Um, no, I, I made up for it when I got older. I got my own money. I started buying my own food. There you go. And I never stopped since. It looks pretty tasty. So, so we, can we take some of this? Yeah, go into that. Go dig right into that. Absolutely, dig right so in. So at your restaurant, one of the things you were talking about is that it's real food. Absolutely. Uh, as opposed to overly processed food. Absolutely. So obviously me being a Culinary Institute of America, I did, had done a stint in La Rochelle, France. I worked for Gerard Pango and uh, Joe Baum and Associates. And when I came back from France, you know, one of the things that I noticed was uh, sometimes in our neighborhoods we have these food deserts, um, particularly in now today's market where, you know, can you get a healthy alternative okay. to a quick service concept? So as a chef, it's chef driven, but it's still comfort food. Um, and it's those items that people are comfortable with, but are easy. So you can assemble, select your, your protein, and then you can have it over arugula or quinoa or couscous or spinach. Or what have you. Now, Chris, being on a lot of sets, right? Film sets, movie sets, oh. you're doing a lot. Television shows, you're on Kevin Can Wait. Um, craft services, how important is it for you to be able to do your job that you're eating healthy food? Very, well, just eating in general. Okay. I like a craft services that has a nice mixture. You know, they have the healthy food, they have, uh, and some, a little bit more, like, naughtier food. <laughs> and what do you consider naughty? Cheese, What's your naughty Cheeseburgers. Okay. Hot dogs. You know, for those days that you want to go off the wagon, you know. But, um, yeah, you have to have healthy food. You have to have people want healthy food on set. Some food should be simple. Food should be simple, right? It should right? be simple, man. You know, just real flavor, real flavor. No artificial flavors and stabilizers, all that other stuff in our food is unnecessary. It's really wow. fresh. What Thank else you. did you bring? So here I have a southwestern red bean and uh, pepper. Uh, again, a side dish, a, star a starch dish. Again, at Salis, the idea is you can come in and you can pick your protein and whatever your sides are going to be. So that's okay. something we have on the oh, menu can there. can I borrow one of those spoons? Absolutely. Okay, here we go. I never had fig on so a salad. It's good. The fig on a salad is good. good. The fig is good. Okay. And there's some roasted uh, hazelnuts on there as well. Oh. So this is a Southwestern inf influence dish here. Again, it, we live in America. So the beautiful thing about American culture is food is diverse. And when we start looking at the regions around the country, we're going to make sure we represent those regions because obviously here in New York City, we have a very diverse population. Yeah, that looks really good. It's delicious. Is it yummy? So good. Wonderful. So now, Chris, you, uh, when you eat at home, what type of cuisine do you guys like? Microwave. Microwave. <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife is an amazing cook. Right. But she only cooks for the dogs. I'm not kidding. She cooks, she cooks like she'll make turkey meatloaf, she'll freeze one. And I guess because our schedules are so opposite, that so she, she doesn't cook for me that much, but when she does, it's amazing. So I get a lot of uh, microwave Amy's and uh, McDonald's. Gotcha. But when I, get to, when I get to eat like this, it is a treat. So we're going to make sure that you get the to-go bag. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. you. Oh. <laughs> Come to Brooklyn. We're not that far. There you go. What's up next? <laughs> so next here I have, I found, I was at the market, and I found these beautiful golden beets. Ooh. Um, Those look good. So, and I paired them here with a lentil salad. Again, these are individual sides at Salish that we have available. So the beets here, um, rub them with a little garlic, with a little olive oil and garlic, wrap them individually in aluminum, 
and then pop them in the oven and cook them with the skin on to try to lock in some of those nutritional flavors as well. The slice you wrap individually? No, I roasted the whole beet. The whole beet. The okay, whole good. Beet. Okay. And then uh, you slice them and they're beautiful. All they're right, so pretty. Here's a golden beet. Here's a golden beet. Good. And the beet goes on. Unless, do, unless, do, unless we eat the red beets. Do you want two? No, one's good. Okay, one's good for now? Okay. So, um, golden beet. Avocado. Avocado. Drizzled with olive oil. That is correct. Edible flowers are just for pretty. Edible, edible Those flowers. Those are edible absolutely. flowers. Oh, what is that? Culinary school, we never put a, anything on the plate that is not edible. Wonderful. So what, am, what would that be? These are... Yes, another what, hon? I'm on avocado. Sorry. Oh, an avocado. You're okay. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you guys off. All right. That's okay. No, no, no. It's all about oh, that. Thank you. <laughs> These are in the dandelion fl uh, family. Okay. But they are edible. Do you want a flower? No. Am I going to go like go on a trip or something? I don't like know that? why. I'm going to try it. Okay. So, okay. Ask Alice. So now, never put I'm anything sorry. on your plate that you that can't. That's not edible. Absolutely. That's uh, I judge some competitions, some culinary competitions upstate New York. Okay. We, I also forgot to tell you that okay. there's New Jer Jersey corn, um, bicolored, fresh Jersey corn, cut it right, roasted it. Cut it right off the cob. I just have to because I've never. I I, I just wanna. I just I just want to. Absolutely. <laughs> it was amazing. The avocado and the beet go to, together. Wonderful. It does. Thank you. I can't wait. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I I know that we have protein coming too. We do. So is protein for that plate? Yes. So we have portobello mushrooms, uh, bicolored fresh to vine ripened tomatoes, and a tricolored herb roasted potatoes. All right. So over here, just give me a minute. I'll put it together. We have ribeye steak. And because it's summer, I added it with a, with a touch of what I consider to be a summer barbecue sauce, where you have the barbecue flavor. Okay. Um, but I paired it with the creaminess of Parmesan, a Parmesan cream sauce. Okay. And you're going to love that really the good. fat yeah. and the fat from the ribeye is my favorite cut of steak because of the marbleization of it. And you really can't go wrong now. I gave you some, uh, some knives. You did give us some knives. Okay, so this is very, as you know, it was very casual. It's like an addition with Donna. It's like if you guys came Absolutely. over to my house, we're kind of hooking up and uh, trying things up. Okay, so do you want this? That display looks so pretty. I almost don't want to touch it with the okay. mushrooms and how we did that. I know that. <laughs> it looks like art. <laughs> uh, you want a piece of this? Yes, I do. Okay, good. All right, chef, hold on. Ta -da. I love you have your steak knife. I love okay. that I know somebody I can call chef. Excuse me, chef. Chef. Like even if we were in a ball game. Hey, chef. Okay. Would, you, would you like to be a chef? <laughs> Just I want I want a friend that I call That looks chef. really good. Um, so the potatoes and the portobello mushrooms and the ribeye steak. Yes. So you season the steak first. Did you marinate it or? That is correct. Um, like a Montreal type of steak seasoning, we put on it, um, and you want to sear it. Because oh obviously, you know, when, when we cook, understanding the science behind what you're cooking, proteins coagulate, right? Starches gelatinize, water evaporates, and sugars caramelize. So when I look at them changing the molecular structure of the, of the food, then I know which cooking method I need to apply to it. So the ribeye is a great piece. Yeah, I'm the restaurant scientist for a reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, the, the idea where you kind of take the ribeye with the, with the, it's very tender. It's just a boneless one. I figured... The sauce is amazing. Thank you. Thank it has you. And a tiny, tiny kick to it, which is perfect. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Chris, you tried to recently go to a cooking class, and <laughs> and the experience, you were a little overwhelmed, right? I was a little overwhelmed. I, I was hoping to learn because I have no culinary skills, mm -hmm. and the the chef was amazing. We, she was talented, so friendly, but they tried to do too much within like the two hour span, so I felt rushed. I felt like I didn't learn. I was giving my wife the stuff. I'm like, you, you shred that. You do that. Right. And uh, but you know, I'm here. Well, and and chef, you were talking to me in the green room about the fact that you're going to be doing some online classes. So somebody like Chris, that would be helpful to him, correct? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating a membership-based school, a restaurant school for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, people say, you know, one out of five restaurants fail. Well, restaurants don't really fail. People fail. People who go into the restaurant business and don't understand the science behind it. So I've developed two curriculums, one for startup restaurants and the other is for existing restaurants. Um, it'll be available online. You can take, you can basically act like a la carte menu. You can select any class. I have 16 different classes that we'll be offering. And you can pick any class you like. Whether it's food and beverage cost control, labor cost control, uh, food service accounting, uh, restaurant design and layout. I design and I lay out kitchens. 
um, all of the consulting services that you know we provide you know at the hospitality concepts which is my as well as some of your own favorite recipes absolutely absolutely huh? I, I want to see him talking more about the, the food science is there something I can watch you doing that or like uh, is where well, part of concept development is truly understanding what your menu is going to be. People, you know, often they'll rent a restaurant or lease a restaurant and the kitchen equipment will already be there. It's backwards. You first need to know what you're going to cook. So the reason why it's the Lease Cafe, you know, I have a $15,000 steamer. People wouldn't say, well, why would you spend so much money for a piece of equipment? Because my customers are going to want their, their, their fish um, either seared, uh, baked, or steamed. So I'm giving them that option. Plus that steamer is going to save me water. So if I'm doing a potato salad or if I'm boiling potatoes, put them in that steamer, I got 15 minutes. So understanding the science, like I was saying before, like when I cook a piece of meat, you know, we're changing the molecular structure. Uh, I want to sear that. I want to caramelize that outside because there's a thin line between caramelization and burnt. Yeah. So right. what type of equipment do I need to purchase that's going to make my operation more efficient, which ultimately makes it more, more profitable? And I think sometimes um, people's passion get in the way. You have a passion about culinary arts or food, but what about the, you know, the business side of actually making money? There's no passion when uh, there's no profits. Amazing. Uh, and you have one other dish for us to yes, try. Yes, our last dish here is uh, peel and eat shrimp um, with braised fennel and braised leeks. Wonderful. So, again, simple ingredients. Everyone in their pantry should have a basic ingredients, olive oil, garlic, and herbs. Okay. And then you just kind of, you know, keep food simple. Okay. It should taste like its original, you know, I, you know, food. It shouldn't change it. It should enhance it. And I never cook anything in water. I always use either a, a vegetable-based stock or chicken or a beef-based stock. Nice. Give me some of fennel. There you go. Hold on. Watch, watch that knife. <laughs> now, fennel is good for digestion, isn't it? It is. It is. It is, it is yeah. good for that. I knew a little something. Okay, we're good. Okay, good. Um, so now um, we have John Stark because this is his place. So, John, you want to come in and you want to try something? Is there anything that uh, piqued your interest? From the Knicks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, but he's friends, but he knows that guy. So, what would you like to try, John? Here, grab me a, a dip. The answer is everything, John. I think I need to try everything. A little bit of everything? Okay, so let's start you out with a ribeye. Mm. So, John, when you, do you do any of the cooking at your house? I do a lot of the eating. You do a lot of I'm eating. Pretty much mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I was just gonna say a spoon. Shrimp is incredible. The shrimp is incredible. Whoa! Hey, you know what? I'm always dropping something. Last time it was the spring rolls when I was here. Okay, so, and a little bit of shrimp for you. A little bit of fennel too, John. We'll make you a plate. Just take the proteins. You'll just take the protein. Just the proteins. Okay. That's so how's that to start with? Good. That's perfect. Beets All right, are great. Good for your blood. And a fork for you. Ah, thank you. There you go. Okay, so. Uh, Chris, when you're on the road, because you travel a lot, yes. right? You're doing com stand-up comedy all over the United States. Um, asking, yes. Okay, so talk to me about that and working, John. This works. Yes. Well, here's the problem that I have is like okay. a mistake I make when I'm on the road is I decide to eat when I'm hungry, and that's when I make bad choices. Mm. That's when I make bad choices. So I'm trying to, I don't know, like so I don't know what to do. I, I pre-cook my meals and bring them with me. I, I have no idea. Do you have a suggestion for that? Um, it depends on if you're traveling, if you have access to, you know, a Whole Foods or a really good, yeah. you know, people need to learn how to shop in order to change your eating habits. You have to, you know, do not bring, you know, what I consider fake food into your house. And when you go to the grocery, grocery store, you know, stay away from the center, you know, go hit the perimeter, hit the fruits and vegetables first, and then hit your, get your protein and, and get out of the store. That's what they tell you, Weight Watchers, don't, they say, never go shopping hungry. And stay on the perimeter. Stay around the perimeter, yep. So what do you think? Good, John? Tastes is great. Really tastes good. Really awesome. All right. Oh, my God. Any other questions, <laughs> Chris? I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. So I, I thank you guys for coming here because, you know, the whole concept behind this is just, you know, hang out and kind of people learn about food. You bring your skills together. You bring a little comedy to the plate. So I thank you guys thank for you joining for me. me. Thank welcome. you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me as well. You're welcome. Because uh, we all need to eat. Yes. Right? Everybody needs to eat. So thank you very much. Thank you. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up. You've been watching me, Donna Drake, and we are here at Showcase Kitchens in Manhasset. We've been visiting with Jason Wallace, the restaurant scientist, Christopher Brian Roach, and John Stark. Thanks. Tune in again. Yeah.